feel like I was running out of time. I felt like I was running out of time. I might have been. Mm-hmm. It was definitely a fun fight. I think she... Will. 18. Pot breaking Will. Damn it, Will. I wonder how effective... How effective that ability is going to be. For Will. Damn it, Will. Sprinting each second moderately increases attack. This effect can stack up to 10 times when the cease upon when stopping. <clears throat> now, does that mean. Does that mean that. Each second moderately increases attack. But does that mean it, it goes up to 10 seconds? I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. Crayon, or candles. Less crayon, more candle. Banana, banana, man, look at that water. Look at that water. Monkey King. All right, moving on. This is our moment. Did I not save it this one? Hmm. Hmm. Could have sworn I did. Nice. Craft armor, it says. Evil repelling, body cooling. Upon use, instantly removes burnt state and significantly increases burn resistance. Anti miasma powder. Upon use, instantly removes poison state. I'm gonna say this is happening. Some new things. What is this? 
Oh, okay, so you can actually have storage two of these. Be sure to safeguard yourself in this ominous place. Kunos envelops their bodies, refreshing their souls. In mountains high, where waters flow, Yagwais lurk, where miasmas grow. I believe you. Cool. It's kind of the end all be all. Weapon selectionist. Kind of move there. Smack the shit out of him. Ooh. Whatever I wasn't supposed to do that. Wonder how I turned into a little bug before. How do I do that again? Whoa, that's a horse. That's a horseman. You don't look like a Yagwai from these parts. Have you come to earn the Blackwind King's favor? Ah, uh, hear me. That bear is but a hollow shell. He can grant you nothing. Don't waste your time on him. He lies about cheating death and even the treasures. His followers are. All of them deceived. Blackwing Kawai is a sly one. He preaches virtue with a heart full of greed. Oh, I wouldn't entrust him with my plea. Thanks. I don't know why you are here, but you should be vigilant. Now I'm pressed for time. Fare thee well, then. All right, horse. With a horn on your head. I don't know why you are here, but you should be vigilant. Now, I'm pressed for time. Fare thee well, then. Can I not do the thing? That's gotta feel amazing. You just take a fucking hair out of your ear like that. It's for sure gotta feel great. He's still here. I don't know why you are now. Thanks for the warning. Big horse guy. Maybe there's. Cavern Bamboo Grove. Oh. Oh. So this is kind of like a checklist. Jushi? Is that what that is? It's 
kind of a checklist for this area. Chapter 1. Huh? Why's it gonna be like that? Big dog. Ooh, that's some God of War shit right there. Look at all that yarn. It's a big totem thing. That does not break. Okay, so I destroyed one. I guess this would be number two. Bitch. Maybe you can't. I cannot risk it. Oh, look at that. Ha 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 ha. Hey, 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 calm down. Kamate. Sure is purdy. That's where it came. Oh, fuck, let's get the fuck out of here. Oh, you fucking frog. Fucking frog. Fucking frog, bitch. I keep forgetting about that. This piece of shit's explode. Jade Lotus. It's a Lotus. Just kidding. Or am I? Am I just kidding? Maybe I'm serious. Where's the next big thing to destroy? Oh, I saw that. Yep. Incense. Another chesticle. Body clone power tigers doing pellets. Longevity decoction. Okay.
Longevity decoction upon use considerably increases maximum health for a long duration. There's a dash attacks. When at full focus, dodging in any direction and following it with the heavy attack performs a powerful new move. Oh. Oh, I can't. Oh, cock. I wonder why I can't uh, upgrade that one. Cannot awaken talents in current status. Interesting. Oh, it's because I'm... Because I was a wolf guy. Wolf wow. Why? Wolf like wow. Wolf white. Wolf cow. Each talent level moderately reduces the stamina cost of heavy charge attacks. Each talent level slightly increases damage dealt by all varied combos. Sprinting while charging. Performing heavy attack during light attack combo with the focus point consumed a destined one to execute a resolute strike. During resolute strike, the destined one can see through incoming enemy attacks and nullify. I think he just means like you gain. Oh yeah, okay. That's exactly what that is. You kind of get like an armor. That's pretty cool. Doesn't look like something I'd use a lot, but still pretty cool. Slightly increases upon consuming the focus point. Where's the spin thing? It's foundation. No. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Just because those motherfuckers are annoying as fuck. Ah, shit. Shitty ass. Shitty ass dickhole. Got a dark 
as fuck over here, dude. Uh oh. Is that what's happening? I should have jumped right over there. Alright, I'd like to know who said that. Hello, Sophie. Oh my gosh. You're so sneaky. You're so sneaky. You okay, princess? Oh yeah. You okay? Okay. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. Where's the journal? There it is. Snake Patroller. As seasons turn from slumberate parts, hidden in green, a hunter with arts, small in shape, it devours the grand, or strikes a pain no cure can stand. In the kingdom of Hami, a small city stood against the mountainside, its lush grasses and dense forests a haven for serpents, much to the town folk's constant dismay. There lived in the city a snake hunter, masterful in his craft, who had freed the people from many a serpent's threat, earning a fair share of silver in the process. He boasted not of his wealth, instead he often dispensed porridge to the needy and prayed for it all. So revered was he that the magistrate awarded him a dwelling for all his family to live within the town walls. One day, a ragged monk, seemingly delusional, came begging at his door. The snake hunter's kind-hearted wife offered clothes and food, but the monk, unsatisfied, demanded liquor. The crowd scorned his impudence, their complaints growing loud until the snake hunter's return. He silenced the clamor and instructed his wife to bring the monk a gourd of spirits. Touched by the gesture, the monk warned, A serpent guai lurks in your home. Ignore it not, or your family shall perish. The snake hunter scoffed at such mad ramblings and dismissed him promptly. Yet his wife heeded the monk's words and urged her husband to search for the guai. He, however, brushed aside her concerns. In his persistence, the wife fetched the mad monk once more to banish the evil. Indeed, with raw meat and an iron hook, the monk drew from their home a massive serpent taller than a man, Clearly a creature of power, four limbs it sprouts and deadly venom, and venom deadly, the monk declared. A mere touch is death. With those words, he slew the serpent wife of the woman. Strange, strangely thence, the town remained untouched by further snake scourges, as if by the mad monk's hand, peace was restored. If you say so. Seven will. So now we have to kind of find out which way is not the right way so that I can discover more secrets. Jade Lotus. Come <laughs> on. 
Asche. How am I getting hit? Some hundred. Y'all go like chief. Wrinkles on his skin so snug, a whiff of air, a fishy hug, legs that spring to heights above from the dirt and muck they love. In the lands west of Blackwind Mountain, within a kingdom named Homai, stood a, oh shit, stood a small town. Every day before dawn, a humble market would gather just outside the town gate. It was a place where peddlers exchanged goods while waiting for the gate to open, but due to the prices, even the townsfolk began to participate. Thus, the market gradually gained its reputation. A few months ago, an, oil, an odd oil peddler arrived at the market, garbed in robes of a pure, pearly turquoise color with the eyes that gleamed like a copper bell, like copper bells. He had a voice that rang out with a boom, and his breath was foul and pungent, yet he happened to be a keen talker and naturally was disliked by everyone. The oil he produces, on the other hand, was sought after by everyone. Who would not prefer the oil clear and smooth, and not to mention its price? One could exchange it but at a pinch of fragrant powder for a large gourd of such oil. One day, a wandering Taoist passed through the town and decided to visit the market. He enjoyed his experience until he sensed an eerie green mist emanating from the, odd pet, the old peddler, Aguai, no doubt. The monk chanted, and before the peddler could manage a decent struggle, it revealed its true form, a green-skinned giant frog. The bystanders were startled and grabbed whatever they could to use to attack. The frog kicked the ground with both legs, leaped higher into a tree, then a tree, and swiftly fled toward the mountains. In pursuit, the folks arrived at the marshes, where they witnessed countless small frogs scraping mucus from each other's bodies, collecting it in a large barrel. They then applied fragrant powder to themselves, hugging and sniffing each other in sheer delight. Silently, the people approached and peered into the barrel. The mucus inside gleamed with clarity, just like the oil they had favored. At the sight, they were occupied by bouts of nausea and began to vomit. None had the strength to pursue and kill guise. All the frogs noticed this and hastily fret fled, leaving the marshes filled with a rather unique scent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tadpole. Offspring of the frog, treasured as it may prove wondrously useful someday. Not absorb spirits without guidance. Oh, fung. Non fungible tokens. Figure this out. Hmm. Skeletal snake. 
The noble fate's vengeful breath binds the bones of snakes in death. The soul mistreated here to stay, resentful will blown astray. In the village of Shaded Heights, there lived a young man, orphaned and impoverished, and constantly mistreated by his fellow villagers. One day, hunters from the village discovered a strange cave in the mountains, emitting eerie sounds that sent shivers down their spines. Too afraid to enter themselves, villagers pushed the young man to investigate. Lost in the darkness, he stumbled and fell from a cliff, crying out in agony. Believing the cave harbored a fearsome guai, the villagers abandoned him and fled in terror. Sitting at the bottom, the young man wept bitterly. Amidst his tears, he heard the sound of bones snapping and the rustling of movement. Startled, he fell silent, only to hear footsteps approaching. Filled with fear, he yelled, Stay away. I am an orphan and burdened with misery. My flesh is lean feasting in me. It won't do you any good. Surprisingly, as soon as he spoke, the footsteps stopped. Time passed, and within the darkness, hunger gnawed at the man's senses. Despairingly, he pleaded, There's no one coming for me. Devour me quickly so I may have a merciful death. Then the footsteps resumed, inching closer. Terrified, he assumed his end was imminent. Yet, to his astonishment, he felt a piece of cloth gently brush against his face. Reaching out, he realized it was a sleeve, which he grasped firmly. The sleeve guided him to stand and led him through the darkness until they found the cave's entrance. At daylight, as the daylight bathed them, the young man finally saw that what had been guiding him, a skeletal serpent Gwai. Seeing the young man startled, the Gwai suddenly extended its neck and swept him out of the cave. Afterwards, the young man was saved for passing, by passing merchants and departed from the village with them. From then on, his life gradually improved and prospered. As the saying goes, misfortune may be the harbinger of fortune, and fortune may conceal misfortune. While not an absolute truth, when events reach their peak, change becomes inevitable. From change, opportunities arise, and the lowest valleys often reveal the clearest peaks. There's paths. Hmm. Snakehead mushroom, red in color, crisp in texture. The fungus can be found throughout the woodlands and clusters. This can be used to make medicines. Okay. Well, I am sorry. I killed your... Savior. Bang. Dick move. Dick move. Yeah, baby. Okay. I'm playing a video game. What you doing? Mountain rains kiss the ground. Youthful green is all around. In her virtues, quiet display. Even guise in the woods repay. In the woods replay. In the highland bounds, there lived the widow and her girl, left to fend against the harsh days alone. The mother sold pancakes in a nearby village. The girl gathered firewood, ground grain, and cooked meals, shouldering her shame share of the family's responsibility. Ceaseless rains had worn down the woodshed, long neglected without a man's hand. The beams rotted and the roof caved in. One day, the girl found atop of ruins a gleaming mushroom, vibrant and capped like a bowl, dew dancing on its surface, a spark of life too precious to pluck. She sheltered it with straw, letting it thrive in peace. Laden with tasks, the girl had no time to play with other children. All her secrets and dreams, she whispered to the mushroom as if it were a dear friend. The toils of life led the widow into illness, urgently needing money for medicine. After discussing it, the widow and her daughters decided to sell their house. A wealthy neighbor, who had once been close to the wid widow's late husband, expressed interest in buying the house. However, this neighbor was very stingy and tried to exploit the widow's illness to lower the price. They spread various rumors to scare away other potential buyers, bullying the helpless widow and her daughter. Worried and anxious, the girl often hid in the woodshed to cry. The mushrooms witnessed all her grievances. The next day, something strange happened at the neighbor's house. Overnight, mushrooms had sprouted all over their property. When the neighbors ordered their servants to clear them away, they discovered a large, eerie mushroom with about a foot tall, neither green nor yellow, growing on the beam, main beam. When they tried to cut down the mushroom with long-handled sickles, it suddenly rose into the air, opened its cap like a fishing net, and floated above them. 
It shook itself and then fell into the man's house, crushing him to death. The air was filled with countless spores and the creature released, knocking everyone to the ground. Afterward, the mushrooms crawled out of the ground, transforming into many guais. They helped the widow and her daughter pack their belongings and leave the village, disappearing into the mountains. Well, that's nice. Oh, shit. That hurt. Sweet. Hmm. Yeah, do they keep reappearing or am I just missing these?
Have you seen those nameless souls adrift on your path? Their wills float aloft, never to fade. Shame, your god serves little purpose, and mine answers solely to me. Hmm. I know a way to guide the souls, mend their paths, and set them free. It will aid you. This is better. This gourd. Though humble, may save the lost, banish their obsessions, and guide them. Hmm. The blessed gourd. Our blessed gourd. Under the guidance of a wise master, the destined one has mastered the art of spirit absorption. The gourd possesses remarkable divine capabilities, allowing it to absorb the lingering wills of spirits left behind by formidable Yaoguais who have been defeated. Nice. For one as destined as you, there can be no turning back. We are like tumbleweeds, drifting through life, with a destiny beyond our grasp. Fair sights fade, but with ink I bid them stay. The road has claimed you, now you must see it through. Your heart will guide you further. We shall meet again. Their sights fade. The road has cleared. Your heart will die. Hmm. Oh. Okay. This is this is where we started. Dang. Okay, so now I can just go back over there. Baling Gubeng Guleng. That's one. Isn't there one I missed way back? When key is full, press L2 and R2 to launch spirit skills. Transforming into a powerful Yagwai to unleash their signature abilities costs key, or chi or key, which can be recovered by absorbing it from enemies during combat. Spirits of the Yagwai can can be cultivated at keeper shrines to enhance their spirit skill. What? Bali Gulang, tongue whip. 
Take the form of Bali Gulang. Stick out your tongue to lash that foes from afar. Though soft, the tongue can still inflict great damage. Moderately reduces the stamina cost for jumps and jump attacks. Whoa. That's kind of gross. Pretty sure there's a wolf way back. Tadpole and Will. Reduces the key cost for the skill. Wandering white. That's the one. All lost spirits have been retrieved. Set spells. Ah. Boom, that headbutt. Take the form of Wandering White, bow with the utmost devotion, ram thy foe with bronze skull, dealing massive damage. I like massive damage. Blood of the Iron Bowl. Oh, he took off. Interesting. Whoa, okay. piece of gold.
Fellas. Shit beat out of me on that one. This humble one's name is Guang Mo. Should my demise come by your hands, please pass this message to my master. Searching for deity, mortals do aspire. Craving immortality, Yao Guai's surely will conspire! But why? What? Oh, it took mad damage. I know you can take fall damage. Come on. Okay. 